Ah, good morning, everybody. Glad to see you all fully recovered from the party last night. The party's so good it broke the plumbing. I don't know what that means. You guys are full of it. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm very proud and honored and privileged to be in front of you this morning uh, at the ninth Worth Camp San Francisco. Eleven years ago, uh, when WordPress started, uh, co-founded it with Mike Little, um, no idea that it would ever be like this. And this is, I think, officially the largest WordCamp San Francisco we've ever had, with the three ticket releases selling out same day each time. So you guys were good at clicking that button really fast. <laughs> All over the world this year, there's going to be... Oh, my name is Matt Mullenweg, by the way. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All over the world this year, there are now going to be 81 word camps in 2014, more than one per week. It's funny because the first word camp, um, we tended to be a template for others. Uh, the other people would sort of take it bar camp style and start making them. Um, but in fact, the first year there was zero, well, just one word camp. And then it really started to pick up with the second one, I believe, coming in Argentina. San Francisco has always held a special place in my heart, though. Um, for those of you who are word camp organizers, you'll appreciate this. This was the post what started WordCamp. It wasn't called WordCamp San Francisco, it was just called WordCamp, because there was only one. But basically, uh, a month before, posted less than a month before, about three and a half weeks before, said, we don't have a venue, a schedule, <laughs> all we have is a date, but we'll figure it out between now and then. And uh, bar camp style is code phrase for last minute. And we did, we came together in a very cute venue in, in San Francisco called the Swedish American Music Hall. Uh, that was it. You can see our AV system was very sophisticated then. <laughs> the wire, like, hanging down, going to the little projector. We kind of had to bring everything in, including the internet. You know, there's the fan in the corner there? <laughs> the AC system was very sophisticated. And the number one complaint, though, was not about the AV, about the anything. Certainly not about the barbecue. It was very good. It was about the chairs. So I hope as you sit in these comfortable chairs that you appreciate it. <laughs> Over the years, it's really grown. We've now been in Mission Bay for seven years, and there's been lots of sunglasses, lots more sunglasses. See that guy right there with sunglasses? What, what is it about <laughs> Word Camp San Francisco and sunglasses? We even had Google glasses. <laughs> We've seen the rise and fall of different platforms. We've seen the growth and regression of lead developers' hair. We've gathered around and ate barbecue, or sometimes salad, as these odd people are doing. We've got Comic Sans on stage. <laughs> we even have had robots attend. Luckily, this year, we have Gary in person. I think he's downstairs, actually. Hello, Gary, downstairs. Um, but we got him in person. But all in all, it's been a pretty incredible run, seven years now at Mission Bay. So it's, it's bittersweet, and it's with some sadness that I tell you that this will be our last ever uh, event here. We've outgrown it. I mean, there was not an empty seat in this whole house, and I expect that downstairs is similarly full. Um, but I have something new to announce, something we've been talking about on and off for a few years. And much like the original WordCamp San Francisco, it doesn't entirely have a name, a date, or a place yet. But next year, we're going to do a WordCamp, let's call it US, just as a placeholder. So taking Kind of what we do in San Francisco, which has the first word camp, the word camp before we put cities after the name, and uh, sort of what was pioneered by Word Camp Europe, try to do an event that brings people from all over the world together and is a bit bigger. Again, we are, we're bursting at the seams here. They're literally, I'm glad there's no fire inspectors here. <laughs> like, um, I think we can do something that uh, has a bit more room for more presentations, more people, more exhibitors, more everything. So we're going to try this uh, next year, and we'll see how it goes. And like it says, name, location, and date to be determined. One thing that we do every year is talk a little bit about the survey. And this year, we had over 33,000 responses to the survey, which kind of blew me away. Um, again, we don't really promote it that much. We just put a link at the top of WordPress.org. Uh, one thing that won't be surprising to many of you is that uh, it's very international. About two-thirds, about actually three-quarters of the survey responses were from people outside the U.S. And 2014 was actually a milestone year for WordPress in this regard. I think that we will look back um, in the decades to come as 2014, the first year, 
that non-English downloads surpassed English downloads for the first time. This makes sense for those of you who are at Nathan's presentation yesterday. He talked about how only 10% of the world speaks English and only 5% of the world is their first language. So over time, um, I really hope that the usage of WordPress mirrors that and that someday when we talk about internationalization, it won't just be about English being translated to other countries, but figuring out how to take plugins in Chinese and Russian and Japanese and translate them back to English. It's a plan at least. One of the things we also talk about a lot is WordPress usage as a CMS. In fact, who here uses WordPress as a CMS? Pretty much everyone. What you might not know is that's been declining every year. Ooh, but what's taking its place? <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to see this because what has started to eat away at people using WordPress mostly as a CMS. So they said they use a CSS as a CMS all the time or about half the time. Blog has also been declining but people using it as an app framework is starting to take share away from that. So it is the early days still, but it is starting to pick up. And I'm gonna talk about this more a little bit later. The other stat I was really excited about is now a full quarter of the people who answer the survey uh, make their full-time living from WordPress. That was 7,539 people. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, that represents easily over a billion dollars in economic activity per year. I mean, that's really amazing. That's bigger than the employee counts of many the larger internet giants. Uh, so this really blew me away and something that I'm extremely proud of. It also sort of speaks to our responsibility as a community that there's now, you know, something seven, eight times the size of WordCamp San Francisco, of people who pay their mortgages and feed their families and send their kids to school with WordPress. The good and the bad is pretty much the same. You guys love it that it's easy, plugins and community. You hate the plugins, the themes, and the updates. <laughs> These are actually the last three years of answers. Plugins have gotten a little bit better, <laughs> but still love community. Uh, we asked how many sites people have built, and actually the survey respondents alone were responsible for somewhere between half a million and a million sites, um, with only, I think it was 6% saying that they had uh, only built one site with WordPress. So WordPress is like the Pringles of CMSs. Once you, have, once you pop, it just can't stop. <laughs> and also what I thought was cool was 91% of these sites took less than 200 hours to build. So a lot of these sites that are being built are much easier. This isn't a platform where, you know, it costs 100 grand to install it and then 100 grand to upgrade it three years later. I mean, it's really something that you can get out quickly and stay up to date easily. Uh, now, those of you who know, we also didn't do WordCamp in October last year. We did it in July. So since the last WordCamp, I was actually, I didn't believe this when I first saw it either, but we've had five major releases of WordPress. <laughs> Oscar, Basie, Parker, Smith, and Benny. <laughs> five major releases. Now granted, one was the day after WordCamp, so kind of slipped in there. But we have one more coming in 4.1. Uh, these releases had a ton of stuff, and I didn't really appreciate it until I actually went back, so I'd like to do that with y'all. Uh, we redid the revisions UI in 3.6. We introduced a better post locking and the 2013 theme. 3.7, we had auto updates, which is, again, one of the most significant features we've introduced in the past four or five years. Made passwords better and improved global stuff. 3.8, which I actually personally led, was chock full of things. We had the 2014 theme, color schemes for the first time, a new theme browser, the MP6 redesign, and for the first time in history, we made WordPress's admin fully responsive. So it worked on tablets and phones. <laughs> I was really into that. I was like, hella high water, we're going to get this in. 3.9, we focused a lot on the WYSIWYG. We got drag and drop images in there, previews of the uh, galleries, and overall just allowing you to edit images a lot better. And finally with 4.0, most recent, we redid the media library, had rich embeds, uh, the new plugin browser, which I'm a huge fan of, and the improvements to the editor which made it, in my opinion, much easier to write long posts. I've actually been on a, uh, a personal quest where I had a 39-day streak. Where I posted every single day. Um, I'm on a new one now. I had like 12 days. Yesterday I missed it, so I'll start again tomorrow. But it's kind of neat. And actually, if you run uh, jetpackerwordpress.com, you now get a notification for how many days you have a posting streak for, which is kind of a fun feature if any of you would like to try to beat my 39. <laughs> I know, I, I saw Tony here somewhere. Tony's working on it as well. He's doing a month of blogging. 
There we go. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, please not another fire alarm. <laughs> you guys are just so hot. <laughs> Tore the building up. Now, uh, besides myself, we had seven release leads. And actually, a few of them are here in the room. So John, Aaron, Mark, Dean, Helen, Mike, Andrew, can you stand up? Where are you? There we go. We got Mark there. There goes, there's Aaron. Oh, Helen, right over there. Being a release lead is very difficult, as I'm sure all of these folks can attest. And it's something that we've even had people do twice. Andy on this list did it twice in this period. <laughs> we also have had a, a variety of new uh, contributors to WordPress in a variety of ways. We have Rachel, and when I say your name, please stand up if you're here. Rachel and Ryan have been working on the API. Yannicka on WYSIWYG. Eric on media. Mel on design. Takashi is now designing two primary themes. And then Weston on um, customizer. And finally, Kim on docs. If you're all here, please stand up. Round of applause for y'all. <laughs> Weston, I was liking your tweets about the API, too, and the node stuff. Also, finally this year, we added five new committers. Constantin, Boone, Gary, Jeremy, and Aaron. You all here? Put your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Whoa! How do you hide them down there? <laughs> um, I can confirm uh, that we're going to let Gary out of the cage soon. <laughs> He's been in there a few. And also, if you notice this, um, we have about half looking left, half looking right, and then Andy just straight on, <laughs> staring right into your soul. Um, Kim is the only one looking fully forward there, so I think that means she's the new Andy. <laughs> but here, kind of everyone's looking right at the camera, so maybe there's something. That's the trick to getting commit. <laughs> Update your gravatar. All in all, we had 785 contributors over those five releases. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Including one that we bamboozled and deleting another release. John, are you here? <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> uh, John will be leading release version 4.1, which is actually coming out on December 10th. So thank you very much. The other big thing over the past few years is that the usage of WordPress has grown a ton. We now power over 23% of websites. Um, yeah. <laughs> to put that in perspective, from 2013 to 2014, we grew the equivalent of two Drupal market shares. <laughs> Activity across the board was up. Plugins were a huge boost. We had over 6,400 added for a total of 34,000 plugins in the repository. In activity, we reached 1 million commits. Uh, I actually have brought you the millionth commit here. Uh, Otto <laughs> decided to make a plugin inception. <laughs> I thought that was a very clever name. We're going to have to talk about that donate link, though. But this was the millionth commit that we had. It was a fun joke. I love our funny commits, like Helen's you know, song and things like that. We get some good ones in there. Themes also were huge, and this is a real testament to the, the work of the theme review team. Uh, we had over 684 themes added. Think about that, that's two a day. And in terms of theme commits, we had over 10,000 commits. In fact, the full third of all the commits to themes in history happened within the last 12 months. So a round of applause for the theme review team and folks there. We didn't slack on the mobile apps either, and especially on iOS. We went from three releases a year to eight releases in the past 12 months for 16 total across Android and iOS. Um, we focused a lot on these. Uh, we've improved the stability, the release cadence, and also we stopped spending so much time on some of the older platforms. Um, There's no longer an official Nokia app or Blackberry app or Windows Phone app. Sorry. <laughs> Both of the Windows Phone users. Well, actually, in our stats, there's 30 people still running the Nokia one. I don't know who those 30 people are, but um, this is a big deal. Obviously, I don't think many people would argue that there are going to be more phones in the future rather than fewer. In fact, uh, this year, another cool milestone, there are now more mobile phones 
on Earth than there are human beings. Beginning of the singularity. <laughs> uh, the attention we've been putting to mobile is very, very important, and that I think will continue to be a very strong theme. Also, finally, following up from last year, you know, on stage, on this very stage last year, we announced developer.wordpress.org, the code reference. I'm proud to say, sometime between then and now, it launched. <laughs> wasn't that week like we hoped, uh, but now at, if you type in developer.wordpress.org, we'll redirect you to this, and you can now have a great code reference. But y'all didn't come to know all that. You came to know what's coming next. So here, actually, right now, here at WordCamp, we have over 100 Meetup and WordCamp organizers. Uh, please stand up if you organize a WordCamp or Meetup, or ideally both. Look around this room. Stay up, stay up, stay up. Organizing a meetup is one of the hardest things to do in terms of contributing to WordPress. Every single month, you got to come up with new stuff. It is, I'm sure you all can attest to that. Like, it's not the easiest job in the world, but I think it's one of the most impactful because these monthly things that bring the community together, as, you, as we saw on the list, community is one of the most important things. So I want to personally thank each and every one of you. Really appreciate it. Obviously, there's you know, 100 meetup organizers here, uh, over 100, rather. The, um, they're representing 21 countries uh, here at WordCamp San Francisco. International has been a really big theme of both our previous releases and what's coming. Um, now, there's a lot of different ways to think about internationalization. Um, of course, it's language, but it's also things like uh, the time zones, the date formats, and these settings, which right now are kind of a per-site thing, and you can set them on install, it's hard to change them later, are going to become a lot more personal. So I think there will be a time in the future when some of these might even be per user. And we have to tackle all the things that Andy talked about in his presentation around internationalization about what to do if someone leaves a comment in Japanese and then I get the comment notification. I should get that in English. Um, so things like that are really important. Uh, one of the things that I am excited to announce is that we have been in testing with language packs for a few of our key plugins, BBPress, BuddyPress, Kismet. Uh, we're going to be expanding that in early 2015. So the promise of language packs the idea that, for those of you who aren't familiar yet, the idea that if you're a plugin or theme author, uh, your theme or plugin can both be translated and also have the description and everything translated in lots of different languages without you necessarily having to speak those languages or be a bottleneck for them, is finally coming to fruition. We've been doing a ton of work. This is a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But I think it's going to be one of the most impactful for WordPress's growth over the next decade, uh, which is also why I'm excited to finally announce that we're going to have a fully localized plugin and theme directory on all of the language subdomains and on December 10th in WordPress 4.1 in the dashboard. <laughs> what this means is that you'll be able to go to your dashboard, let's say you installed in Spanish, and you'll be able to type whatever you're looking for. Um, you'll be able to type anti-spam in Spanish. I don't know how to say that. Is anyone Spanish? Anti-spammo? I don't think so. <laughs> we'll work on that one. Uh, <laughs> and you'll be able to get a list of all the plugins that have that available. And all the descriptions will be translated. There'll be local reviews. There'll be local support forms. Basically, everything that you've come to expect um, from the English WordPress.org will be available. This is actually really fascinating to me, because if you look at it, one of the Amazing reasons that people adopt WordPress today is the 34,000 plugins and thousands of themes. But these don't exist if English is not your primary language for the most part. There's, for example, the plugin directory doesn't translate descriptions. So you have to, it, maybe you can find it and then it'll, you know, it'll include a language, so it'll work in your locale. But even the discovery process is, is hugely uh, prohibitive to people. And if WordPress is going to be truly global, truly inclusive, that means it's not just available to people in English. It means that the other 95% of the world who, for whom English is not their first language, it's just as important to have an amazing experience. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I think that it will, well, it's kind of interesting now that we're having sort of these anchor word camps. You know, there'll be one in Europe, one in America. I imagine there'll be ones in Asia and Africa in the future, sort of pan-continental. And we'll have these three or four events per year. And each one I could see having kind of its own thing meaning like its own set of contributors, its own set of core committers, its own set of plugin developers. Um, we have the potential, I mean, thanks to the web, for WordPress to be a truly global 
experience. Related to all the work we've been doing on plugins and themes, I know we have a few plugin and theme authors here in the audience. Uh, we are finally going to be adding better stats for y'all. <laughs> dun dun dun. Maybe not. Okay, there it is. <laughs> like maybe we're not. <laughs> This is actually actively being worked on right now. So it's not just a buy in the sky thing. Um, we've been doing a, a cleanup of our entire stat system. And actually, we've been finding some pretty interesting data about it, uh, which brings us to what I'd like to highlight as one of the biggest challenges in the WordPress world uh, today and going forward. This is a pie chart of uh, the different versions of WordPress. And as you can see, only about 25% is on our latest release, 4.0. Now, I should say that this is infinitely better than it was before. Uh, it used to be we'd basically only get new installs and a very small percentage of old installs upgrading. People would basically do a one click and be stuck on it forever. Um, but still, as you can see, there's, I mean, there's a full third of this that doesn't even have the MP6 redesign yet. I feel bad for those people. <laughs> so working on this is one of the most important things uh, we're gonna be able to do. And actually, we have a lot of partners. There are also sponsors of WordCamp San Francisco here that uh, we're gonna be working with to help us with this, and that's the web host. As you know, a lot of major web hosts have introduced auto major version upgrades. So meaning that you, know, you can be on the beach in Jamaica, and if a new major release of WordPress comes out, it will be upgraded when you get back. Uh, this is really, really important, because when you think about it, um, even the whole concept of version numbers that we have is a little bit archaic. Right? It kind of goes back to the days of shrink wrap software. Um, when you log into Facebook or Twitter, or for that matter, when you log into you know, Squarespace or Weebly or Wix, you don't think what version you're using. Actually, I take that back. With Squarespace, you do. But with others, you don't. <laughs> they don't really even talk about versions. You just get that day's version. You get October 26's version of whatever software you're using. And that is our goal for WordPress as well. Um, you know, as you saw, updates is one of the things people weren't happy about. Uh, our vision is to have it work kind of like Chrome. You know, where just you log in and just in the background it's silently auto-updated, all your plugins work, everything works, nothing breaks, and um, the hosts have been kind of the pioneers of this. So already I know for a fact uh, GoDaddy, Bluehost, and a few others have been auto-upgrading people. Um, we're going to start, now that we have better stats, start working with list with these folks. And so saying, here are the sites that are on older versions. Can you use your support resources or your direct contact you have with these customers uh, to help them get on the latest and greatest? Benefits everyone. Benefits WordPress, because they're seeing all the cool new stuff we've been working on. Uh, it benefits the platform, because they're not comparing a four-year-old version of WordPress to today's versions of Squarespace. Uh, it benefits the host, because those old versions are ticking time bombs. You know, you don't update software on the internet, pretty soon something will happen to it. It'll get hacked, a plugin will be out of date, something like that. And so these hosts being on the latest and greatest versions um, is, that, I think, going to, in the long term, lower their support and things overall. Because, as anyone know, who's ever had a WordPress site hacked here? Yeah. It's a pain, isn't it? <laughs> and in fact, to be honest, if you're not pretty savvy, you're not going to be able to clean it up in a way that you won't get reinfected. I mean, these guys, these hackers, they sneak in, uh, or crackers, they sneak in you know, back doors, they put things in hidden files, they're very sneaky about how they put things there. So you might think that you've updated a major site secure and there's still a problem there. Um, you really need systems level access and maybe even a little command line to do that right. The other thing that's been pretty notable about WordPress in the past is uh, our relationship with PHP. Some might call it controversial at times. Uh, most notably, we decided not, there was a go PHP thing that happened. And we said that you know, so many of our users are on old versions of PHP, we're gonna keep supporting those. And in fact, to this day, we support back to 5.2 um, in core WordPress. And when we look at the stats, we still have millions of sites on these older versions of PHP. But in thinking, what can we do with the WordPress, with the broader PHP community to help make the situation better? Because I'm sure just like us not being happy about people being on old versions, they aren't happy about it either. Um, we're going to start using our relationships with host uh, to help get everyone on PHP 5.5 or above. <laughs> The update system for WordPress sends what PHP and MySQL version are using. So we're able to use this to, again, provide hosts with lists. Um, maybe they don't even remember that there's a server someplace or things like that. I actually had a, a DreamHost account that was still in PHP 5.2 for one of my installs. 
these sorts of things, you know, people just forget about it or they don't notice or something doesn't get upgraded or you're locked to a version of PHP because you used a setting in the control panel that you forgot about. Um, lots of people who would be perfectly happy. I mean, WordPress works perfectly, obviously, with the new versions. Um, and there's also lots of performance increases in the last few major regions of PHP. I think we can have a big impact there. I mean, certainly on 23% of the web, <laughs> we can start to work with our partners and the folks who are part of the WordPress ecosystem to make this better. So excited about this, and hopefully this will bring us a bit closer to the broader PHP world <laughs> that I know some of you are in. One of the other cool things coming this year is 2015 theme. Have you all seen this yet? It is gorgeous. It's a little low, a little low contrast. There's actually two colors on there. <laughs> this isn't the best screen for showing these things. One of the exciting things about 2015 is that it's actually our fifth year in a row releasing a new default theme every year which is the number of years that Kubrick was in core. <laughs> we said we were going to fix that, we did. <laughs> and the, I think the new default theme program has actually been pretty successful. Uh, again, our, our guidelines aren't to create a theme for everyone. It's not to create something that's a perfect teaching theme or perfect base theme. There's things like underscores for that. But it's to create something that shows off what WordPress can do and is different from the year before. So this year we're focusing almost on like a book-like typography, a book-like feel. So it has, uh, you know, kind of a left menu. You can have a big hierarchical navigation there. Who knows? We might even use it for our WordPress book that we put out there. One of the other things that's been kind of interesting in the past call it a year or so is the experiments that WordPress has been doing with Git and GitHub. In fact, moving some things like all of the mobile apps are now developed entirely on GitHub. Um, who here uses GitHub, by the way? Well, that's all the hands. <laughs> uh, little thing to announce, not a huge thing, but we're going to start doing something experimental, uh, which is looking at the pull requests that come to the official WordPress repository on GitHub and trying to integrate this with our normal workflows. So now, as of today, you'll be able to submit a pull request to the WordPress repository, and that will not go into a black hole. <laughs> Today plus a few days. <laughs> it does say by the end of the year there. Sorry, I got a little excited. Well, these next things I'm really excited about. Sorry. <laughs> you might remember last year when I was on stage, I talked about MP6 and how one of the things that made the MP6 uh, program successful, and in fact, we've tried to use it as a model for other plugin first release development we've been doing, was uh, that the team very tightly communicated. And we used Skype to do that. Um, Skype was fantastic because it allowed the team to have a fast, asynchronous channel with which they could kind of keep up with each other, but it had a ton of downsides too, which I talked about but are still true. Um, Skype kind of sucks on mobile, <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. Uh, and this was before that latest redesign they did that didn't make anything better. Uh, it, wasn't <laughs> it wasn't archived or publicly accessible. Like the logs weren't really searchable. They just exist on a few people's hard drives and then they might be gone forever. So a decade from now when Siobhan's working on the next version of the WordPress book, <laughs> we're going to have trouble finding that stuff. <laughs> it's okay, I'll save them for you. <laughs> we actually, we had this problem with IRC too, but one of the other things I'm excited to announce, uh, and this is happening as of today, is that for the first time we're going to experiment in 11 years with not using IRC as our primary communication method. We're going to try out a little tool from a company here in San Francisco called Slack. <laughs> Some of you might not have used Slack before. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, in fact, it supports color schemes. I've got an MP6 looking color scheme on here. Comes with kind of a funny looking eggplant by default. Um, but how Slack works is that you can have channels uh, prefixed with hashes, kind of like IRC, except these will all be our channels. So kind of uh, Everyone that's part of the WordPress community will come in there. And so instead of having to do like WordPress task dev, we can just do the things on the left. Uh, sorry, we have a naming scheme. I didn't want to mess it up by saying anything wrong. Um, teams can now use this to communicate with each other. And this will all be searchable and part of the normal thing. We're doing integrations. Like as you can see, WordPress.org commits are coming into the meta channel. There will also be things like uh, if a ticket is mentioned in Slack, we'll link that from track. So there'll be integration between the two. They'll basically have kind of like a two-way communication mechanism going between them. Uh, this will be available to every single user of WordPress.org. Normally, Slack, you have to be part of a company or have a company email address. We've made it so every single person will be able to sign up. 
And one of my favorite things about it is that it works on every device. So, <laughs> yes, I'm excited about that too. You'll be able to keep up with WordPress chats no matter where you are in the world. Has anyone ever tried to run IRC on their phone? <laughs> the core contributors. You had to, right? So starting right now, oh, wait till after the talk, but you can go to chat.wordpress.org, and it will redirect you to a page that tells you a little bit about the benefits, why well, we've decided to do this first non-IRC experiment with Slack, um, as opposed to any of the other number of systems out there, and some of the things we're excited about using. So um, actually, Automatic's been using Slack internally for a few months, and it's been transformative for the company. Uh, just that ability to have the pings, the mobile apps, the, the channels, the search, the search is actually killer. Um, it includes animated GIFs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need to animate a GIF of me going. <laughs> you turn off the GIFs? Uh, we'll turn that back on. <laughs> we, we should turn off Giphy though. Uh, it has, so it also has a number of commands, one of which is the Giphy command. So you can type Giphy in a search string and it'll pull in whatever comes, it's like I'm feeling lucky for GIFs, which... <laughs> aren't always community appropriate. <laughs> so <laughs> I agree we shouldn't have Giphy. But the ability to have curated, bespoke, chosen GIFs I think is important. <laughs> So check this out. Uh, please, you know, when you go back to contributor there, things like that, log in. Uh, I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised. You can use it on the web. So it runs just in a web browser. They have a desktop client that you can download that runs it locally. Um, there's a beta coming out that allows you to be signed into multiple teams. And uh, again, run it on your phone. And it doesn't kill your battery. <laughs> so I uh, hope to see all of you on Slack very soon. <laughs> I'm glad you're all so happy. I'm drinking water. <laughs> this state of the word brought to you by Hint. <laughs> Just kidding. Although they would be great to have a sponsor. <laughs> One of the other things I ended up talking about a few weeks ago at WordCamp Europe that became a little bit surprisingly controversial was this five for the future idea. Um, some of you might have seen the blog post, but basically the gist of it is that for WordPress to remain a sustainable enterprise, a sustainable thing going forward, uh, 5, 10, 20 years from now. Um, I have no doubt that the project will survive. You can still go download PHP Nuke. <laughs> Open source projects never go away. <laughs> Only one person knew what PHP Nuke was. <laughs> um, but very few thrive, even in long, as long as the 11 years that WordPress has already. And one of the reasons that we have been able to, and I think that will be key for the future, is that all the participants in the ecosystem put a little bit back into it. Um, so we talked about this five for the future thing, and basically saying that, again, totally optional, we're not coercing anyone, we're not guilting anyone, we're not saying anyone has to do anything. But for organizations who feel like they benefit from the growth of WordPress, or they sort of, you know, a part of the ecosystem uh, in a way that they grow alongside it, to take 5% of their WordPress resources, whatever they sort of normally spend on that, and uh, put it towards core, or community, or meetups, or organizing, or word camps, or things like that, organizing word camps. Um, this has been uh, pretty exciting. And actually, already uh, three companies have publicly, well, two companies have publicly announced, Gravity, and one I wouldn't think I'd see on stage, uh, WPMU Dev, have announced they're going to start putting 5% of their resources towards core. And also today, I'm proud to announce that Automatic now has 14 people, which is 5%, working full time on WordPress core and community. So. <laughs> this slide is too small. <laughs> There are probably other companies already doing this that we don't have, haven't done a blog post yet or not on this list, and I hope that many, many more will consider it going forward. Um, you can ask any, you know, any of the folks who currently contribute a lot to WordPress. It's one of those things that, not just in Karma, but you get back so much more than you put in. And the growth of the, you know, it's about also the members of the ecosystem, not just growing their slice of the pie, but growing the entire pie. Um, this is what it's going to take us from 23% to 30%, 40%, and maybe even someday, powering a majority of the internet. We're not going to do that with one company. We're not going to do that with even a handful of companies. We're going to do it like the internet works, with hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coordinating all over the world. So if you are a part of our organization um, that's already doing this, let me know, and I'll put you in the blog post when we talk about this. And uh, if you want to do it, um, I'm happy to talk to you all about sort of the, the ups and downs, the pluses and minuses, and things to think about. 
Again, if you're a freelancer, you can do this. Uh, five hours, five percent would be two hours a week. Maybe that's the time it takes to organize a meetup. Now the meetup people are looking at me like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Ten hours a week. Well, you could also think about it. I mean, you're awake. I mean, there's 168 hours in a week, so five percent is closer to eight and a half, eight, <laughs> nine hours. Okay, okay, okay. Let's say 40 in two hours. Like that's okay. Um, <laughs> there's lots of ways you can contribute. And in fact, if you'd like to know how to contribute more, there is a booth downstairs where you can go to all throughout the day. Um, you can visit make.wordpress.org online for those of you watching from the live streams. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that. There's hundreds of people tuning into the live streams, including I think 15 or 20 other locations with rooms smaller than this, but like this, where they're doing viewing parties. So say hello to the world, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but there's lots and lots of ways to contribute, and no matter what your skill is, um, there's something that you can do that will be helpful. Uh, actually, my path into this whole thing was that um, I discovered a platform called B2, which was the code that WordPress was based on, and uh, I just started hacking around with it, and I would ask questions in the forums. And one of the days when I was going back to ask another question in the forum, I saw something I had already asked that someone else was asking. So I figured I'd answer it because then maybe people would help me more or something. Uh, but that sort of, st ooh. <laughs> that started a, uh, you know, a long downhill path to, here, to being here today. <laughs> but that, that thrill of contributing, that uh, rush of helping other people is really one of the most rewarding experiences I've had in my entire life, and one that is still what I center my life around today. So we have a lot of contributors. Who is a WordPress contributor here? Um, a contributor, by the way, is a title that no one can give you except yourself. That means that you're doing something that you feel like is having an altruistic impact on the WordPress community. So I hope that by this time next year, a lot more of y'all have decided to give yourselves that title um, because you're welcome. It has all been one happy family, and we have cookies and barbecue. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk the last few days over the REST API. Who's excited about this? Right? As you know, there's been a project on WPAPI.org. Um, we talked about Ryan and Rachel already, but many other people involved has been doing some very exciting work around creating a JSON REST style API uh, for a lot of WordPress. At the same time, on WordPress.com, there's been a REST API that's been getting a ton of adoption in terms of different partners which are integrating with WordPress for the first time, from YouTube to Path, um, new internet services, which previously were so scared of our you know, XML RPC stuff and the uh, millions of endpoints and all sorts of different things that they just wouldn't even do WordPress integrations, even though we're by and far the largest place that Facebook likes are embedded and everything else, like pretty much every widget on the web. You look at the stats and WordPress is the number one user or they get the most distribution on WordPress. Some of the other things that I want to point out is very important for us to work on this year is the two robots need to fall in love. <laughs> uh, in the version two of both of these APIs, and I said maybe version three, but hopefully version two, we need to bring these together. Um, there's some things that on the hosted side we figured out around sort of multiplexing things, around authentication, around the way certain APIs work when you try to recreate all of WP admin, the things you can do and not do, pagination, um, that I think are really important. And there's things that the WP API has been very comprehensive in doing, including mirroring a lot of the things that we've done before in terms of internal APIs. Um, now, once we have these REST APIs, uh, there's been a few talks on it already, but think of it almost like WordPress can become a kernel, and then you can interface with it in JavaScript, in Node, in Python, and almost anything with easy client libraries. So the WordPress engine, this app platform usage that we've been talking about for a few years now and is rapidly picking up, I think it's on the cusp. Um, my feeling is that when we get these REST APIs, it's important to build as many things as possible on them when they're in the plugin phase. But once we get into core, there'll be like a Cambrian explosion of things built on top of them. You can even imagine a world where the way that we think about theme setting screens or how plugins work or how services work could be totally different. Rather than trying to shoehorn a lot of things in the custom post types or something, maybe a plugin actually just interfaces using these APIs to your different WordPresses and gives you a completely bespoke interface, uh, posting interface, uh, like some of the things that maybe Happy Tables or other folks have been trying. Um, this will be so much more possible, and I think that this is finally the time. You know, I haven't gotten the question recently, but I get it sometimes where, when are you going to allow theming for WP Admin or things like that, which is 
tough or a bad idea for a number of reasons. But maybe what we need isn't theming for all of WP Admin. Maybe what we need is a way for a thousand different WP Admins to bloom. That anyone in the world can create their sort of version of the interface and fork each other's and you know, have these that uh, interact with each other and that we'll be able to sort of more rapidly iterate on what it means to be WordPress. So this is, you know, I've talked before about Theseus's ship. Uh, do you guys know about? It's the idea that there's this Greek ship and on its journey, every single board was replaced. Uh, so at what point is it still Theseus's ship? What is the thing that makes it sort of uh, in a semiologic fashion, like still the thing that we know as this thing we call Theseus's ship? So what's the thing that makes WordPress WordPress? Uh, besides you all. Uh, is it the interface? Is it the PHP code? Is it the database schema? Um, I think that we can abstract a lot of these things away and, like I said, have a real explosion of things built on top of it. And finally, one of the things I want to emphasize most is the continuing importance of responsive and mobile. Um, did anyone see this picture before? Uh, it's actually pretty cool. So the one at the top, it's, this is the, where they're about to announce the new pope. And you see it once at the top, there's one, like it looks like a razor in the bottom right. And one weird girl turning around. <laughs> and in the future, you even have someone taking a picture with an iPad. Who does that? <laughs> it's just a sea of phones. Um, like I said, there are now more phones on the planet than human beings. They're winning. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, you know, cater to them or they're just going to replace us. <laughs> My phone already has a better memory and everything, a better looking screen, it's more connected. Um, it's amazing both the, how fundamentally the idea that we can always be connected, uh, that we have these sensors that are with us all the time, and then also how these have been getting bigger and bigger. You know, when the very first iPhone came out, have you ever seen the, the resolution of the screen on the first iPhone would take up about the size of my thumb? on the 6 Plus. The capacity of these to do more and more things in the richer, richer interfaces uh, is better than ever. Who was in Luke's talk yesterday? Where he talked not just, not just about being responsive in terms of the screen size, but about in how far it is from your face. There's ways we can think about this um, that I think WordPress can actually be the lead on. If you look in the mobile world, it's all about apps. Apps, 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 apps. Everything's an app. Um, the mobile web still gets a ton of traffic. In fact, in all the stats we see, the mobile web has more traffic than ever. Um, but applications aren't really being built in it. I think this is one area where WordPress cannot just ride the wave of, but perhaps be the lead uh, for the next generation of what comes in mobile. In Android L and iOS 8, the web cap capabilities of these devices are getting better and better and better and better. Android even puts tabs on a browser at equal footing with apps in the task switcher. Um, this is incredible. Uh, also, at the Android uh, announcement for Android L, it showed 60 frame per second animation in web views. You're now able to do things as the power of these gets better and better. I think the web comes back as the dominant computing platform, just like maybe in the Windows 3.1 days when connectivity and power and everything, we all used apps, we all used things like Office, and they got supplanted by the web as computers became more and more and more and more powerful. Um, I think that the same thing is going to happen on phones, and that WordPress, both as an application platform and as an app itself, uh, is poised perhaps to lead that. So I will encourage all of you, when you build a plugin, when you make a theme, test it on as many devices as possible. Put it on the tablet, put it on the phone, put it on the old phone. Don't worry about that Razor phone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Don't worry about BlackBerry. <laughs> but test these things and think about it. Um, this is one of the ways that, again, we can be truly global. A lot of people forget. Uh, who knows what the mission of WordPress is? What is it? There you go. Uh, a lot of people forget this. I, I did a seven country, 10 city tour in Asia earlier, and there was generally one or fewer people in the audience that knew, uh, these are audiences of two or 300 people, that knew that the mission of WordPress was to democratize publishing. Um, that means everyone. It means everyone in every language. Uh, WordPress is a community. This is actually the gravitars of the 785 contributors. Um, it's a community that regardless of race, religion, creed, as long as it's GBL, <laughs> uh, gender, everything, uh, people can be part of it and be part of this family and be part of this thing that we're building. 
In the same regard, we want our software, the things that we build, to be accessible to everyone. Uh, be that from an accessibility point of view, a device point of view, a language point of view, everything. Uh, this is the vision of WordPress. It's why we're all here in this room today. And actually, this year, more than any year in the 11 year history, I'm very excited about working on it with all of y'all. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>